Your Serene Highness, Excellencies, dear Joël, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, bonjour et bienvenue. It's a great honor and pleasure for me as an ambassador of peace and sports, sport to join you this morning. What a great place, what a wonderful world here in Monaco. I'm so happy to join you again. Thank you very much for the invitation. As you know, it's the second time for me to stay here with you. And I thought, what could be my priorities in this 10-minute speech? This is a rather hard job. But I will compromise and I will say there are some, I think, very important things that I want to tell you this morning. First of all, you see this stuff, the symbol of peace. And when I saw this this morning, I thought, they had the idea of Ban Ki-moon's Juala in his hand. There were many of you in Copenhagen who saw the Juala in Ban Ki-moon's hand. And this was a very, very strong symbol of the meanings of sports, the values of sports, because this Juala is a, was a ball produced, handmade, in a slum of Nairobi. And in this slum I will be next Monday, Tuesday, to meet my friends there on a completely different place of the world, in a slum in the heart of Africa, where we can find the values of sports in a completely other way. And I think it was a very good sign that the Secretary General himself joined, as the first uh, time that it happens in the history of the IOC, and gave this ball as a symbol to the president of the IOC. And if I think about the values of sport that we heard yesterday in different addresses by the speakers, I will not repeat them right now here because this is the same way that we all time do that. But how can we achieve our common goals? At least how we can achieve the millennium development goals. And so, to be honest, I have first to say, we at the UN look much more than the sports for all ground and not to the elite sports. We are absolutely sure that in the IOC and in the international federations, they do a very, very excellent job. I see this sometimes enough. I see this all my lifetime. I'm working for more than 40 years in this field, and I'm very happy what uh, there. But one point I mentioned at the UN, UN UNESCO meeting some weeks ago. Is it right that we only are looking for the winner? Is it right that the winner takes it all, as it's said in the, the song, the winner takes it all? And if we see, or when we see how the media are only looking for the gold medalist and the world record holder, and forget the third, fourth, and tenth, but they had maybe the, the best personal result for themselves. I have to praise their work and their results. Maybe that we have to change our attitudes, not only looking for the gold medalist, but also praise the work of thousands and hundreds of thousands of good boys, good girls, working in the field of sports, but in a completely different way. Looking there for challenges to be role models, as we heard it yesterday, I'm so deeply convinced that we need more strong role models in our world. But not only the superstars, we need them as, a, as an engine from the train. Huh? This is very important. There must be the gold medalist. There must be a very strong one in front of us. But then we need much more young role models to be role models in the slums of Africa and the townships in South Africa and in poor areas all around the world because we can use these role models as engine, as a power of sports all over the world to bring this and a sustainability uh, for many, many children and youth. So I think this could be a little change to bring people 
to give people another idea. I worked nearly 20 years in football, and everything is money, 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 money. It's wonderful. I had a, a wonderful life, and I have the opportunity to work now here because I had this wonderful experience with a lot of money. But if you be honest, or if I look back, I don't care if we win or lose against Spartak Moscow in 1986. But what is absolutely more important, that I have still friends in Moscow from that days. This is important for sports, and not only resu the result. And we have to bring also this thing in the head of many, many uh, people around the world, especially in the media. So that has also something to do, of course, with doping and with bad problems and other things. And also, I have to say, and I don't, uh, I, I will mention this, I was absolutely unhappy when I was in Dubai and could see in TV what happens in, in Cairo and in Algeria uh, last week. This has nothing to do with sports. This is something what I uh, absolutely uh, cannot agree, and we should all stay together to bring these people uh, to, the, to, to give them the idea that it's nothing to do. If there, there was a match, there was a winner, there was a loser, and that is what we learned in our first lesson, that you have to congratulate the winner and then come together and leave also as friends. So, to accomplish this important task with the help of sports, we need to work together. We the United Nations, its member states, NGOs, the International Working Group, the Olympic family, sport organizations, and the private sector. This is why initiatives such as the annual Peace and Sport International Forum are so important. They give us the opportunity to engage in dialogue and exchanges, and more importantly, to create lasting partnerships to take action. It is absolutely clear for me, and this is one of the most important points that I uh, really appreciate to be with you here. We have to communicate and we have to cooperate and to coordinate our actions. I'm absolutely sure after 18 months going around the world, there are thousands of very good projects all around the world, but nobody coordinates them. And it is a great chance, of course, to use this event here to discuss different projects and to learn from each other and not to be in a competition. This is what we learned in Nairobi in last uh, June when we come together with many NGOs. And my idea from former times was also let's go in competition and then become better and better. But in this special field, from my personal point of view, is that it's good to communicate and that we don't make mistakes the second and the third times. And one other very important point is that we have to take care that people don't think oh, we have to do something for our own NGO. We have to do something for our own government. I was asked by a big CEO in a company, what, what is good for us if we support, I think it was the Special Olympics. What is good for do you? Do we sell more of our products? No, I don't, I don't, you will not. Uh, uh, sell more of your products. But it's so absolutely important that we support from different fields, from governments, from com companies, in different ways and fields, the sports. And so we have to communicate, we have to cooperate and coordinate our things. We need to identify the project that are most successful. We need to learn how we can build on these projects and make sure that they are sustained and owned locally. We have to listen to the people who need our assistance. Their needs are what we are trying to meet. Dr. Omar Obama said to us, we have to be, we all, we have to be the pacemakers. But after a while, the governments in the developing countries have to take the task, have to, have to take the work. It makes no sense to stay for the next 50 or 60 years in different projects. But to be honest, it is very important that we stay together. I just mentioned the government who said, well, we want to have the German or Swiss flag on this project. It is nonsense. I really appreciate your work, and this was the first time I come together, 
with uh, Peace and Sport in Buake in the Ivory Coast. You have a tremendous good project with the International Judo Federation there. And this is a joint venture. The sports minister, uh, who's also joining us from the Ivory Coast here in Monaco, he supports this the national uh, um, uh, federation and the international federation. The Germans are supporting it in a little way. And so I think it is much more important to look at the people and not to the, to the sponsors. It is important that this money and this common work looks to the people, to the children and youth, and this was a tremendous good example for me personally. To come to an end, last month in New York, the General Assembly has granted observer status to the International Olympic Committee, recognizing the IOC activities and goals that are also the UN goals, fostering peaceful relations and friendship through sports. On the same day, and it was really a day of sports at the UN, the Assembly also adapted the biannual Olympic truce resolution on the occasion of the upcoming Winter Olympics in Vancouver, with the goal of encouraging global ceasefire for the period of games. And do you remember Beijing when we had this wonderful opening ceremony and we come, come back, came back to our hotels and saw the pictures of war? I feel very, very bad at this moment, but I feel very good when I saw the Russian and the Georgian uh, athletes hugging each other after the winner or during the winner ceremony. That makes me a little bit happy, and I really thought, well, should the IOC rule the world, it may be better than having war in this, uh, this special moment, the opening ceremony in Beijing. And we are discussing, and I tell you something about the Olympic Tours. So there the sport, this both athlete shows us the values of sports. Finally, tonight we will sign the memorandum of understanding between the UN and peace of sports. Sport for a better world. I'm very happy to be here, and I want to thank Joel Bouzou for his tremendous good work. Thank you. It is great to see and to have you on board of this peace mission. Thank you very much, Joel.